Today, we're gonna to talk about the lazy keyword in Swift. We're gonna talk about what it is, how to use it, when you should use it, and then some of the some of the pitfalls of using it too much. But real quick, today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to get your beautiful online presence or iOS developer portfolio up and running very quickly. Check them out at squarespace.com slash Sean Allen. All right, let's dive into this example. But first, let's talk about like what lazy is. It, it kind of does what its name says, right? It, it puts off work until you need it. Or you may hear this called like just in time. Like as soon as you need it, it'll get it ready for you. And we're gonna do two examples. Like one common example is, you know, you're initializing your object and during that initialization, you wanna have a variable, but that variable doesn't know about the other variables yet. So you can do that lazily. And then another very common example is if something is very computationally heavy, like it takes a long time to process, uh, then you want to do that lazily because you don't want that to always be going. You only want to do that heavy process when you need it. And we're going to dive into some examples. So the first example I'm going to show is during that initialization where I said like uh, an object may not know about the other variables. So in this example, I want to have an introduction. So var introduction. So I want this introduction to say, you know, so-and-so has entered the game at this position for this team, you know, that stuff. But the introduction doesn't know about the name, team, and position yet, right? Because this is going on during initialization. So if I mark this lazy var introduction equals, and then you have to do uh, open close parentheses at the end to actually run this closure, because essentially you're, you're calling a function here. Uh, but I want to return now entering the game, and then this is going to be the name, position, and then for the, and then team. So for example, now entering the game, Michael Jordan, shooting guard for the Bulls. Like that's what I want this to say. But I want this introduction to be as a property on player. So I can just call like player.introduction and spit out this string. But again, the reason we had to make this lazy is because during the initialization, right? I don't know about name, position, or team. The initialization has to complete before I have that information. So now what I can do is I can create a player, var Jordan, and Jordan's going to equal a player. And we'll initialize that uh, with a name of Michael Jordan. Team is the Bulls. Position is shooting guard. And we can get rid of uh, this parameter because it's going to be nil for the initialization. So uh, now I can call uh, print Jordan dot introduction. So again, this is the example when you want a property that requires, you know, the full initialization before you use it, and you can make that lazy to get that. So if I go ahead and run this, we're gonna see the introduction down here. Now entering the game, Michael Jordan, shooting guard for the Bulls. Now you may be asking yourself, why can't this just be a, a computed property rather than a lazy variable? That's fine, that would work here too, but let's talk about the high computational example and why a computed property wouldn't be good for that. Because a computed property, every time you access this, like Jordan.introduction, it gets recomputed every time. But you know, for this string, no big deal. Again, if this was a very heavy computational uh, function here, it would be a big deal. And that's what we're gonna do right now. All right, so let's make some room here, get rid of this. And let's get rid of this print statement. We don't need that anymore, but we will need the room. And I do have a piece of code that I'm gonna copy and paste over because uh, you don't wanna watch me type this, it takes too long. I'll walk through it real quick. This is just kind of our expensive function calculator, right? So it's just a calculator with a static func called calculate games played. It returns an int. I'm basically just creating a very large array. Uh, so here's my empty array. I'm iterating through that array 4,000 times, appending a number to it each time, and then I'm returning games.last. Yes, I know, not very efficient, that's the point. So now if we scroll down and create a property on player, so var games played, and that is going to equal calculator dot calculate games played. So now every time I initialize a player here, right, where Jordan gets initialized, it's going to run this super long function. Now watch up here on the right next to this for loop. You're gonna see it iterate 4,000 times. And you're gonna see how long it takes because it's an expensive uh, function. And it's being called when we're initializing this player down here called Jordan, right? Because games played runs. And this is gonna, you're gonna see the power of lazy here. All right, let's run this. And you can see it counting up to 4,000. It, it takes a bit, right? There it goes, 4,000. Now our player is initialized. So you can see how long that took. So what we wanna do is we don't want to calculate that during the initialization. We wanna calculate that lazily. So we only wanna do that calculation that takes four seconds when we need it, right? If we're not gonna access player.gamesplayed, there's no point in spending those four seconds to calculate that. So let's make this a lazy var, just like our introduction uh, below. We'll put a space here uh, so people can see that. 
and then that, that, and then return and give the open and close parens to actually run the function. So now when we initialize our player, watch up top again where that 4,000 uh, counted, it's not gonna count the 4,000 and our player is gonna be immediately initialized down below. So it's running, okay, it ran, nothing happened. We didn't run that calculator function, but our player down here on the right has been initialized. And that's the power here of doing it lazily. Now let's actually access it so you can see it. So we wanna print uh, Jordan.GamesPlayed. So now we're actually accessing it and then that's when it's going to uh, actually you know, run. So if we run it again, it's running up there in the upper right, you can see, because we are actually accessing it down here on line 27 and we printed it out down here in the console, uh, as you can see. Now again, back to that computed property, right? Because the computed property kind of does the same thing, right? You're, it's not gonna compute games played until you actually access it. But the difference with lazy is lazy actually stores that value, right? So we got that value of 4,000 for games played. Now, anytime I access games played, it's not gonna do that calculation. It stored it on the object. However, if this was a computed property where you would just do var games played uh, equals, and then you're gonna get rid of this, get rid of that, Oop, get rid of the equals. This is uh, of type int there we go so now this is a computed property right here now if i do we're just going to copy and paste this a couple times so if i were to access jordan.games played every time i try to access it it's going to run that calculation again so we'll run it up here and now watch this number up here you know we're going to go to 4000 we're going to go right past that to 8000 and then on to 12000 right there we go see 4000 we're, we're doing a 7000 so now you're delaying you know three times as long, but that's the computed property. The computed property is going to run the calculation every time you try to access it, whereas lazy ac uh, calculates it once and then stores it onto our player object. And lazy really comes in handy when you're creating like multiple objects. Like say we wanted to, you know, create a whole starting five here. Well, let's take this back to uh, of our games played equals our calculator equal, you know, calculate games played. So now this is just the, the typical variable we had before where it's gonna run during initialization. And again, I copied and pasted this, but let's say we have a whole new starting five for the bulls here, right? The 97 bulls starting five. So we're gonna initialize five player objects and you know what's gonna happen, right? If you don't make this a lazy variable, when I run this, this is gonna go nuts up here, right? It's gonna run five times or, or 20,000 times. It's gonna take forever because it's initializing five player objects down here. Uh, and it's gonna do that calculation five times. So. A beautiful example here of where lazy is going to save you that and it's only gonna run the calculation if I were to do like rodman.gamesplayed. Now let's talk about the main pitfall of using lazy, right? Cause it kind of sounds too good to be true. Just in time, why not make everything lazy? That way you're getting everything just as you need it. Well, here's the main pitfall here in the documentation and I'll link to this in the description if you wanna read more about these uh, lazy stored properties. You scroll down here and you can see that uh, they're not thread safe, basically. We'll read this real quick. Uh, if a property marked with lazy modifier is accessed by multiple threads simultaneously and the property has not yet been initialized, there's no guarantee that the property will be initialized only once. So again, if you're using a lot of multi-threaded code, it can be accessed by multiple threads. So you could get some funky behavior. So that is the reason why you wouldn't wanna just overuse lazy. So again, use it sparingly for situations like this when you have a, a heavy calculation that you don't wanna run until you absolutely need it, but lazy is perfect for that. Now, if you're here learning about lazy, that means you're an iOS developer, maybe you're looking for a job or that next contract. And for that, a portfolio is very helpful. And that brings me to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is a great way to get that online presence, that portfolio up and running extremely quickly. And look, like we're iOS developers. We're not front end web developers that can quickly create a website, make it look good for every browser type, all the different screen sizes, make it responsive. Like there's a lot of work that goes into creating a website. And as iOS developers, I think we'd rather spend our time like building apps or learning new things about Swift or the Apple platform. So I'm of the mind, let something like Squarespace take that portfolio off your plate and you can have something beautiful, again, up and running pretty quickly. They got great themes. They handle all the analytics, all the SEO stuff for you. Uh, it's gonna look great and it's simple to use and the portfolio is gonna be insanely valuable to you. So head over to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And when you're ready to launch that portfolio, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So that wraps up this video on the lazy keyword in Swift. Again, we went over two very common examples. Hopefully you understood that. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments. We'll see you in the next video.